There's a formula in this cell that creates a monthly calendar. I can change the month number to show a different month, highlight the holidays, and list them at the top. This is Deborah Dalgleish from Contextures.com. I've opened a new workbook, named the Sheet Calendar, and we're going to build the calendar here. Starting in cell A3, I'm going to type the weekday names that will go across the top of the calendar. So I'll type SUN for Sunday, and then select that cell, drag across. I'll see a pop-up with the weekday name. I want to go across to Saturday. I want those to have a border be bold and centered. And then we'll build the calendar below that. So the calendar could be up to six weeks. We've got seven days across and we can see up in the top corner it's saying six rows times seven columns. So I'll put borders around that. I'm going to make column H narrower. I'm going to put labels here for year and month. Auto fit aligned at the right. These two cells I'm putting a border on and blue fill. We're going to type a year number in here and a month, so I'll type 9. I'll format centered. Next we're going to create three formulas in column M. I'm going to put labels in column L and I've made column K a bit narrower. The first label is Sunday. Next is month start and month end. I'll put borders around the cells where we're going to create the formulas and make them just a bit wider to fit the dates. The first formula will be the month start based on the year and month we have here. For that we're going to use the date function. Start with equal date open bracket. The year, we'll click on the cell where the year will be entered comma, the month is the month number, comma, and one is the day that we want to use. Close the bracket and there's the start date for the year and month we've entered. Next, to get the month end date, we'll use the end of month function. Equals EO month, open bracket, then the start date is the value in this cell, type a comma, and the number of months that we want to move forward or back is zero. We want to stay in this month. Close the bracket and press enter. Select this cell, click the Format Painter, and click on that cell. The final date we have to calculate here is the Sunday for the month start week. September 1st, I'm not sure what day of the week that would fall on, but we want the number one to be in the right spot in this first row. So I'm going to check by changing the formatting here. Instead of a short date, I'll change it to a long date, which also shows the weekday name. I'll make that wider. So September 1st is on a Friday. So the one should be here. We're going to use a formula in this cell to fill in all the numbers. So we have to know the date of this Sunday in order to start the calendar. In this cell, I'm going to use the weekday function to find out which weekday number the month start date falls on. So in this cell I'm going to type equal weekday. The serial number is the date, so I'm clicking on the month start date, close the bracket, and it shows weekday number 6. The numbering system goes from 1 on Sunday to 7 on Saturday, so Friday is day 6. We want to go back one fewer day than the weekday number. So we're going to subtract one. For September we want to go back five days. If I change the month to July, it's on a Saturday. So the one would be here and the first of the month is six days back from that. And to get the start date we're going to take the month start date and subtract that number. So I have to make a change to this formula. I'll click after the equal sign and link to the month start cell, minus, and I'm going to put our weekday and the minus in brackets and press enter. So Sunday, June 25th would be the start date for the July calendar. And if we go back to our September calendar, it's Friday, September 1st, and the Sunday is August 27th. 
Now that we have all the dates we need, we can build the calendar. And that just takes one formula in this cell. We're going to use the sequence function, which is available in Excel 365 or Excel for the web. So in this cell, type equal sequence. And then the number of rows is six, comma, the number of columns is seven for the seven days. And our start number for our sequence is the Sunday of the start week for the month. Close the bracket, and there's our calendar. It's not very pretty right now. It's showing numbers instead of dates. I'm going to select all of those and go to the number dialog launcher. That opens our format cells. And I'm going to create a custom number format and just type the day number. Just so just a D, click OK, and there are the weekday numbers. I'm going to make them bold, bigger, and I'm going to make the rows taller. So if you wanted to print this and put a note, you could, and we'll put that at the top of each cell instead of the bottom. Next, I'm going to make a heading for the worksheet to put the month name and year at the very top. So in this cell, I'm going to use the text function to format the month start date. Equals text. The value is the month start date, comma. We want this with the full month name and the year. So in double quotes, four M's for the month name, a space, and four Y's for the year number. Double quote, close the bracket, and there's the month. We could make that bold and bigger. And I like to center that, so I'll select all seven columns. Click for alignment. And for horizontal, we want to center across the selection. And click OK, and there's the heading. And later, we're going to put in the holiday list below that. We don't want to see all the days not in the month, and we're going to use conditional formatting to hide numbers. So on the Home tab, Conditional Formatting, New Rule. This is going to be a formula, and I want to find cells where the date is less than the month start date. Look at what cell is active, cell A4. So equals A4, less than, and then click on our month start date. So for those cells, I want to format them with white fill and white font. OK, and OK. So that gets rid of those. We're going to do the same for anything that is after the month end date. So the cells are still selected. Home tab, conditional formatting, new rule, Use a formula equals A4 greater than our month end date. And again, the same formatting with white font and white fill. Click OK. OK. And there's our calendar all cleaned up. An optional feature that you can add to the calendar is highlighting any holidays that are in the current month. I've added another sheet to this workbook called Lists, and in here there is a, a formatted Excel table with dates in one column and holiday names in the other. So back on the calendar sheet, I'm selecting all the cells in the calendar, and then on the Home tab, go to Conditional Formatting, New Rule, Use a Formula. And this time, we're going to check if a date is in that list of holiday dates. So we'll start with an equal sign, and we'll use the count if function. Count if, open bracket. I wanted to check the range named holidays, so I'll type that. And then a comma. Type the name of the first cell in the range we have selected. So A4, format, the light color. Click OK, and there's the formatting, click OK. And now this is December, and the 25th and 26th are highlighted. 
Another option, if you want to get extra fancy, is to show a list of holidays just above the calendar, pasting in the formula. So the text join is going to combine all the holiday names that we find. It will use a comma space separator. It's going to ignore any blank cells. Then the filter function will return results from that holiday table, which is named TBL Hall, in the holiday column, which is the names of the holidays. It checks the date to see if it's greater than or equal to the month start date, and it's also less than or equal to the month end date. So it's going to find all those holiday names, and if it doesn't find any, it will just return no holidays. Then TextJoin puts all of that in a string. So if I press enter here, it shows Christmas and Boxing Day.